Namaste friends. In this video, we are going to discuss on characteristic of constitution, the provision of three branches of government, executive, legislature and judiciary. As a constitution of democratic country, our constitution carries fundamental characteristic of democracy and constitutionalism. Nepal is a federal democratic republican country. That's why number one characteristic of the constitution is federal democratic republican system. Other characteristics are sovereignty vested in people, secular inclusive socialism oriented state, provision of citizenship by descent, naturalized citizenship, honorary citizenship, and non-residential Nepalese citizenship, provision of fundamental rights and duty, parliamentary system based on pluralism, bicameral legislature in center, unicameral legislature in province, adult franchise, periodic election, and mixed electoral system, independent judiciary with power of judicial review, provision of constitutional bench, provision of constitutional body, complete press freedom, self-rule, sovereignty, territorial integrity and sovereignty vested in people. These four things we cannot amend while amending the constitution and in our schedule 5 to 9 there is the list of power of center, province and local level. There are also two common lists and residual power remain in center. These are the characteristics of our constitution. Let's talk about executive branch of government. As we have exercising federalism, we have three level of government, three tiers of government and that's why executive also divided in three tiers of government. There is federal executive in center headed by prime minister. There is provincial executive headed by chief minister and village and urban executive headed by chairman of village municipality or mayor of urban municipality. Let's talk about legislature. Like executive, legislature also divided in three levels. There is federal legislature in center, province legislature, which we call province assembly, and urban legislature and village legislature in local level. Federal legislature is bicameral legislature, where is upper house national assembly and lower house, house of representatives. In province, there is unicameral legislature, which we call province assembly, and in local level, there is village assembly or urban assembly. Let's talk about judiciary. Our judiciary don't have federal structure, it is a unitary system, but also there is three tiers of court. There is Supreme Court as an apex court, high court and district court. In Supreme Court, there is Chief Justice and 20 other justices. The jurisdiction of Supreme Court is power of judicial review, enforce fundamental rights, can issue five types of risk, habeas corpus, mandamus, certiorari, prohibition and coarento. And ordinary jurisdiction, it can hear original and appellate cases, review own judgment, review case, examination decision, refer for confirmation, transfer case of lower court, punish in contempt of court. These are the ordinary jurisdiction of judiciary. There is also the provision of constitutional bench, which is headed by Chief Justice. The function of constitutional bench is here the dispute between jurisdiction of three tiers of government. Also, it see the dispute related with election of member of federal parliament and provincial assembly, ineligibility of member of federal parliament and provincial assembly and question of serious constitutional explanation. These cases are heard by constitutional bench. There is uh, one high court in each province. Altogether we have seven provinces, so there are seven high courts and in every district there is one district court. Let's talk about the relation between executive and legislature in check and balance term. How does legislature control the executive? Election of prime minister and motion of no confidence means legislature can elect the prime minister also it can dismiss him. Prime minister and minister are accountable to parliament. Parliament passed the policy program and budget of government. 
Parliament should approve treaty signed by executive, parliamentary hearing of ambassador and member of constitutional bodies. Executive appointed, but there should be parliamentary hearing. Call minister in parliament committee to answer the question of parliamentarians. In this way, legislature control the executive. Then how executive control the legislature? Prime minister can dissolve the house of representative as per article 76-7, summoning and prorogating the session of house in recommendation of cabinet. This will be done by president, but recommendation of cabinet is there. Executive give business through government bill and other bills. Next is executive body have power to bring ordinance. It can bypass the legislature through ordinance. Prime minister is powerful member of parliament which have majority in his or side. That's why he can have tremendous influence over parliament and sometimes parliament seems as a rubber stamp of prime minister. What is the relation between executive and judiciary in check and balance form? Let's talk about Executive control over judiciary. Chief Justice appointed in the recommendation of Constitutional Council, which is headed by Prime Minister. Judges are appointed in the recommendation of Judicial Council, where Law Minister is member. Executive control the budget of judiciary. Nepal Police and Government Attorney have important role in criminal case. President can pardon the punishment in the recommendation of Cabinet. This is how executive control the judiciary. How judiciary control executive? Judiciary review the administrative decision. Judiciary review the ordinance and delegated legislation. Judiciary can issue directive order to government. Also judge are involved in inquiry commissions. Judiciary have power to punish in contempt of court. This is how judiciary control the executive. Let's talk about relation between Legislature and Judiciary from check and balance perspective. Legislature control over Judiciary. Chief Justice appointed in recommendation of Constitutional Council where three members are from Legislature. Speaker, Deputy Speaker and Chairman of National Assembly. These three persons are there in Constitutional Council. Parliamentary hearing of Chief Justice and Justice. Parliament enact law related to Judiciary. Parliament pass the budget of Judiciary to Parliament can pass impeachment motion. Agnes, Chief Justice and other Justice. Likewise, Judiciary also have control over legislature. Judiciary have the power of judicial review of the law which was enacted from Parliament. Court have power to decide election related dispute. Legislature cannot alter the facility of judges in their disadvantage except in the emergency case. Sub judice issue cannot be discussed in Parliament. In this way, Judiciary also have control over legislature. In conclusion, the constitution of Nepal has adopted the basic principle of separation of power where the legislature has the task of enact law, the executive has the task of implement the law and judiciary has assigned the job of interpreting the law. As Nepal adopted the parliamentary system, there is cohesion between parliament and executive. However, judiciary is relatively independent. There is sufficient provision of check and balance not to let any organ of government be authoritarian. All three organs of the government should function within the limit of the constitution for strengthening the democratic system of the country. Now we come to the end of the discussion. Feel free to comment and put your observation on this video matter. If you haven't subscribed my channel, please subscribe it. Thank you very much.